Ryan Poles had a chance for what he thought could be a historic move for the number one overall pick, but instead he goes with getting a number one wide receiver. Was it the right move? We're going to talk about that. Plus, we're going to talk about why the Chicago Bears may not pursue that defensive lineman Yannick from the Indianapolis Colts. And lastly, Equinomi St. Brown says the Bears are going from last to first in the NFC North. We're going to talk about the realistic chances of that. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. Right off the top, if you want to follow the show, you can do so at Shy Bears Central. You can also follow me if you choose to do so at CEO Hayes, at CEO H-A-I-Z-E. But let's jump into the content for today. So Ryan Poles mentioned that he had what he thought was a chance at what would have been a historic move. He says this, I thought there was an opportunity to do something historically pretty cool with a trade down from one to two and then from two to nine. Uh, had the potential to add more draft capital this year and then the possibility that you're sitting on three ones in the following year. That had my attention. But my gut told me to trigger on it now and the and at the combine. I thought those quarterbacks did an outstanding job in their interview process. A lot of teams felt really good about some of those guys, but as you get further away from the combine, maybe there's a bad pro day or something that turns teams off. So Ryan Poles had, you know, what he said it, what he thought could be a historic trade down and trading down twice, but he decided and weighed the options and maybe the fear that maybe in a pro day, maybe in something that happened since the draft, that some of that trade, they trade value goes down and so he he capitalized on the deal that he had available now some have said that his um relationship with the uh the carolina panthers gm definitely played a role in that as well and also adding a, a number one wide receiver in dj Moore to a wide receiver core group that needed it and a quarterback that needed that number one wide receiver also so you know in looking at this do i think that ryan poles necessarily made the wrong decision no because you know we can all say if if was a fifth we'd all be drunk right so you know it, it it, you always have the possibility of another deal. There's always going to be that possibility out there. But when you, you you get what you need now, and it's not like he got a bad deal. I don't think many people look at, at what the Chicago Bears got as a bad deal. There's some that definitely think the Bears could have and should have gotten more, which this this deal would have done. But, you know, the chance at something historic, by you know, to forego that, to have something for sure in what you got, I'm not necessarily mad at it. You know, it's it's cool to hear that Ryan Poles is just, he's reviewing every single option. And he eventually trade down to nine, got a number one wide receiver in that time as well. Depending on what falls at nine, we could still walk away with a hell of a, a pick at number nine. But I want to throw this one to you guys. Do you think that Ryan Poles should have went with the, the home run hit that this historic deal could have been? Or did he play it right by getting the deal that he could have locked in right then and there? Let me know what you guys think on that one down below. All right. Let's move into the next topic for today. And this is Yannick uh, Ngagwe. I, I always pronounce it, mispronounce his name, but Yannick, uh, defensive lineman there. Uh, there's been a lot of talk with the Bears being interest, rumored interest. And a lot of Bears fans do look at this guy as somebody that the Bears could absolutely go and pursue and should pursue to bring in and shore up that defensive line in those trenches area where we need the most work done left in this in this offseason. So the, the one thing with that, and 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 as we look at this and, uh, you know, some of the reports around him and why the Bears may not be interested, well, first off, it looks like he's he's looking to maximize his earning potential every single year that he can in this in this deal that's coming up. And as we know with the Chicago Bears, they're very, uh, Ryan Poles has done, he's given, you know, some length on contracts, but they've been very reasonable deals. And if Yannick is looking for the most money possible, the Bears may not just be willing to offer that. I do also think, that is something said that we are 10 days at this point into free agency, if not more, and we still haven't seen him signed. And we know that he's a heck of a talent, at least, you know, on paper, he, he, he could fit a lot of teams. But then there's also some, some questions about his run defense. Now, why he has, has great pass and he's increased his sacks, there's some reports and concerns that he actually is lackadaisical in the run side of the ball, in the run side defense. When you look at the hits philosophy and what that means, you, you, you know, run defense is a big part of that. His run grade last season was four, uh, four, 43.7, um, which has always been low. And Al-Qaeda Muhammad, for example, was 57 last season. And we already know how we feel about Al-Qaeda Muhammad. So the questions there are over Yannick being the fit. You know, there are some that think because he played for in Matt Eberflus' system before, the scheme fit is there, which it could be. But is the, is the fit there that what the Bears are, are looking for in, in going to their defensive line. Yes, we know we need more pass, um, you know, rush in our defense. We absolutely need that. It's something that we've hugely been missing at. But do the does the pass defense, may uh, the, the benefits of that 
Is it taken away some by, by, by the, his run defense in which some people think he's lackaday, like that word lackadaisical. Now, again, we all know th these articles, these rumors, some people judge pl football players a lot more harshly than what they need to if they're not perfect players. But is that concern around him? And if Ryan Pose also shares that concern and the combination over the money that he wants, the combination of those two things may be what keeps him from becoming a Chicago Bear. Now, if he was willing to take a more reasonable contract, and even with those, you know, those those concerns in the run game that he has, you know, maybe that would eliminate some. But with him looking to maximize his earning potential, with which is his right, not trying to vilify that at all, as a football player and as a professional athlete, and there those time periods, those those career spans are already short. You're not wrong to want to maximize your money in a time where you're where you're still fairly young, you you still can get a big contract. So I'm not trying to make him a villain for wanting to maximize his earning potential. But that may be what keeps Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears away from Yannick. Now, throw this one to you guys as well. When you hear this and when you see this and you hear those concerns that are surrounding him, do you think that it's still worth the the, the risk is worth uh, the potential reward, I should say, is worth the risk if we do get him and he's not necessarily as good in the running game. Now, again, the Bears had a pretty good, um, you know, run. We were worse than run. We were terrible. Um, so who knows, man? Like that, the, you, you, he could be coming in while he brings something. Could also be, you know, maximizing what was already a difficult thing for the Chicago Bears last season. So, you know, I guess we'll see what happens with that. You know, free agency. It, it's always somebody who doesn't end up getting the money that they want and that's left to maybe take a shorter term deal so that they can another prove it deal, so to say, so then they can go out and try to maximize on their money in the following offseason. Maybe Yannick ends up being one of those players. Anything is possible. Do you guys still, even with these concerns, would you still like to see Yannick be a Chicago Bear? Or do you think that at this point, uh, you know, 27 years old, uh, is, it, is it too much of a risk to go after that? And, you know, also something to be said that I didn't mention on Every, every, he has been on five NFL teams so far. And when you look at it, the last four season, he switched teams every single time. And every year, the team that's gotten Yannick has, has really, a pre, or really sought after him, but then was willing to move off from him the, the following off season. So while he is looking to maximize that potential, it's something to say that Minnesota, Baltimore, Las Vegas, and, and the, the Indianapolis Colts and just so he's been on those teams since 2020, right? 2020, he's been on that many, four different teams. Since 2019, five different teams because he started his career off in Jacksonville. Is there something there as well that, that shows that concern that it's like the teams that he's been on don't look to keep him? You guys can let me know. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. Maybe it's, just, it's, it's uh, overthink at this point. He does bring a skill set that the Chicago Bears could absolutely use but I want to know down below, does that concern you at all in, in, um, in his career and things like that? All right, before we end the show today, Economy St. Brown said that he thinks that the, that the Bears can go from last to first in the NFC North. And saying this, he says, I think uh, this was a steal for us. We got a lot of picks and a great receiver for, for the number one pick. DJ Moore is a great receiver. Biggs brings a lot of versatility to the offense. I think the trade was a win for the Bears. And then goes on to say on this podcast that the Bears can go from first, um, from worst to first. And how realistic is that, right? We know that we still got a lot of work to do. I want to be clear there. It's not anything that we are at a place right now where we don't, we know that we still don't need work on that offense and defensive line. We we have a lot of work to do there. And before we head into the season, to, to me, to say that we can go, like, is there a potential that we can go to first? The NFC North is as open as what, it's ever been and probably will ever be in the foreseeable future once one of these quarterbacks and teams in the NFC North firmly put their grasp around the division. But with that being said, the Bears do have that chance. They still got work to do. But when you look at the weapons that we were able to add on the offensive end, and that was one of our biggest questions. Yes, the offensive line is an even bigger question than that. We've made some improvements there. We still got work to do with the upcoming draft and the rest of free agency. The defensive line, we've improved our linebacking core drastically. The secondary was not a thing that we necessarily had to have a big concern about in this offseason. Still got some front work to do on, on the defensive line, but we've even made acquisitions there that have absolutely helped that. Walker coming in would immediately lead the team in sacks and QB pressures. That right there alone is signs that we have improved. The linebacking core, 
We've improved there. Hopefully, Jack Sanborn takes a, a measure of growth, especially with this core now, and then we continue seeing that dominance and get back to being, you guys know, I want to see us be the monsters of the midway. Yet again, I love defense. I'm a defensive guy, especially when it comes to NFL football. But ultimately, the Bears getting to being the first team in the NFC North comes down to a few things. How do we continue to address the, the trenches where we have a lot of work left to do there? The growth of our quarterback in Justin Fields, who showed tons of growth in his second year and, and is potentially going to show even more now with more weapons and hopefully a better pass protection as well. That, that, that work that we do in that offense, the fact that the Bears could actually have a formidable offense, and they showed flashes of it last season. We had games in which we showed flashes that we can be a really fun and exciting and versatile offense, and we've added weapons to that. When you look at bringing in Dante Foreman, some people think that he may be even a better fit in what we have going on than uh, David Montgomery. I personally got to see it before I can say that. When you look at Khalil Herbert, even him having the chance to make growth as well. Kari Blasting game, he did amazing things in blocking for the Chicago Bears. And so you look at us even bringing in Travis Homer and what he can be to special teams, and he feels like he's one of the best blocking running backs in the league. How do we use him in certain areas? It really does come down to this. The defense, Matt Eberflus and what that defense, the hits philosophy, being, di being disciplined as well. We got away from being disciplined as the season went on, limiting penalties, things like that. We need to see that come back. But with what we were already able to do with our secondary last season, an improved linebacking core, hopefully improved defensive line, an improved offensive line, and hopefully Luke Getze actually opening up the playbook for the offense some. If we can get to that, if Justin Fields grows as a passer, as many of us think that he will and should do with the with the improvement around this team, it's not out of the question that the Chicago Bears become the number one team in the NFC North. If anything, this is the year to make that move. Now, again, I always like to preface everything by saying we have work to do on that offensive line. But if that work comes in and we are, look, look at what, for example, what Justin Fields was able to do with his legs, with having a terrible offensive line. If we can get to having a decent offensive line and even above that and him to have more time passing have actually time to review him as a passer and him to grow as a passer go through his progressions use the wide receiver core that we have better utilize Cole commit even better and hopefully he makes another step in in his growth in this season the sky's truly the limit for the chicago bears and we'll see if they can do it you guys can let me know down below if you think the bears can go from worst to first next season that's it for me for today. Make sure you're following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.